Now let's think about investment spending for a few moments. Figure 12.4 shows real investment from 1979 to the second quarter of 2011. What's your initial impression? Kind of jumps around a bit, doesn't it? Unlike consumption, remember consumption when we looked at that, that was a nice smooth line? <laughs> investment does not follow a smooth upward trend. In fact, we can clearly see that investment declined during the recessions identified during this time period. We see the recessions of 1980 and 1981 and 1982, the recession of 1990 and 1991, the recession of 2001, and then our last recession of 2007 and 2009. So let's think a little bit about what's going to affect planned investment spending. Remember, because we're looking at the aggregate expenditures model, we're thinking specifically about planned investment. The four most important factors in determining the level of planned investment with regards to the aggregate expenditures model are expectations of future profitability, the interest rate, taxes, and cash flow. Now when a company is trying to decide whether or not to undertake new investment, it's going to estimate what the rate of return is going to be on that investment. A firm's going to be unlikely to build a new factory unless it's relatively sure that demand for its products are going to remain strong enough through the payback period on its investment expenditure. So this is why planned investment tends to fall off significantly during a recession. The uncertainty associated with the recessionary period makes it difficult for firms to determine if the return on their investment is going to be high enough to justify the expenditure. On the other hand, during an expansion, firms may become more optimistic about the future, and when they do that, they increase their planned investment expenditures. Now, some planned investment spending by firms is financed, and so anything that's financed is going to be sensitive to the interest rate. Generally speaking, the higher the interest rate, the lower the amount of planned investment spending. And when the interest rate falls, investment spending tends to increase. Again, this is related to that idea of needing to be able to obtain a certain rate of return. Um, their rate of return has to cover or be in excess of the interest rate they're paying on the loan they've taken out. So if they're looking at building a new facility and they expect their rate of return on that facility to be 10%, but the prevailing interest rate is 12%, then that's maybe not going to be a good investment for them. But if the prevailing interest rate is only 6% and they expect to earn 10% on this new facility, then that is probably going to be something they're going to undertake. So when the interest rate goes up, fewer and fewer projects are going to be those that have a high enough rate of return to be undertaken. And when the interest rate falls, more and more projects now are going to have a high enough rate of return to cover that interest rate. Taxes are also going to affect the level of planned investment spending. Firms make their investment decisions based on after-tax profits. So if corporate taxes are reduced, then after-tax profits increase and planned investment increases. But if corporate taxes are increased, after-tax profits will decrease and planned investment tends to decrease. Now we said that some investment is financed, but some firms also use their own funds for planned investment spending rather than financing the projects. So cash flow now is going to come into play because cash flow is the difference between the cash revenues received by a firm and the cash spending by the firm. So in other words, is there cash on hand that they have to spend on investment projects? And the more profitable a firm is, the more likely they are to have cash available for investment projects. During a recession, profits tend to fall off and cash flow tends to decrease, and that decreases the availability of funds for investment projects.